Turn me up. And just like that, we are back. Brian and Jack today. We gave Matt the night off. He is sweating out his Philadelphia Eagles. We're down 7-3 right now for the Rams. Uh, but we are here. It's Bimageddon week, so we don't have that many games to go through, but we have a few. But first, before we do any of the NFL, Jack, Matt's not here. So I think we have five minutes to just talk about our Auburn Tigers winning in four overtimes against Texas A&M on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, look, we're traditionally speaking, Auburn is a better program program than Texas A&M. We should be beating them nine times out of ten. With the way that our season has gone, the way that their season has gone, we had no business winning that game. I know it was at home, injured in hair, but we still had no business winning that game. And it took four overtimes, but we got there. It took four overtimes and a dropped two-point conversion to really get there. But, yet, I mean, I had faith going into this game. It was the only night game at Jordan-Hare all year. It happened to be senior night. So if Peyton Thorne was going to show up for one night, it had to be senior night at Jordan-Hare. But, yeah, incredible game. And we'll, we'll save most of the talk for Thursday's show. But, oh, my God, Jarquez Hunter, dude, I'm going to miss that man. The best running back we've had yeah, you know, since, I don't know, Bo. Like, honestly, the best running back we've had. Yeah. I was going to say you're going to disrespect your now Jaguar tank like that, but I, I think Hunter does take the cake over Tank Bigsby. Definitely. Takes it over Kate Tank, takes it over Carry On, uh, Cameron Artis Payne. You know, I'm trying to think of like some of the best running backs who, who over was, the past decade. Was it Cam Petway, the guy we had our freshman year? <laughs> that was the big Petway. guy. Was that his name? I think it was something Petway. I'm sure one of our one of our Auburn buddies is going to yell at us for not getting it right. But no, I mean that that does sound right. Uh, but honestly, it, it sounds too much like Pettiford, who is our new love in Auburn basketball. So you know, whatever. I mean, yep. look, these guys they they come and go. We we got to give them love if they deserve it. Cam Petway, if that was your name, which I think it was, you don't deserve I it. I think so. I think so. And uh, yeah, we will save it for Thursday. But tonight. Auburn taking on Iowa State to start off the Maui Invitational. And those jerseys are absolutely clean. And I cannot wait to see them dunk all over Iowa State and those things. I know, right? Yeah, I shout out front of the pod, McCoy. He's uh, sending us these links for those jerseys. And I was like, hey, yo, chill. My wallet is going to see this. It's like (laughs) 140 bucks for a new Auburn basketball jersey. I don't think I can do it, but might have to. I mean, hey, if we do, then we might be able to flip some five stars from Ole Miss, get that extra NIL money coming in. Yeah, why not? Why not? You know, we, we're not going to have Shania Broom forever. There you go. Well, that's enough of the Auburn talk. I guess I'll talk about my team that's not very good. I, even though Auburn's not very good, but at least they won a football game. I thought I was going to have fun with Tommy DeVito. I did not have fun watching Tommy DeVito on Sunday, 30-7. Uh, to 7. 30 to 7. Yeah, there's a joke somewhere there about uh, Baker Mayfield, a mediocre baker, ruining a bunch of Italians' Thanksgivings. But to be honest with you, I've been up since 4 o'clock in the morning, and I couldn't think of the the punchline for that joke, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, Yeah, but DeVito was not good. Darius Slayton, who I started in a fantasy league, had a bagel. Um, Bucky Irving ran all over us. And Mike Evans is back. So that's a nice mm-hmm. sign for the NFL, I guess. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, this this game, uh, I think it kind of went how people expected. I think it should have been a little closer than 30-7. to 7, But for people, I, I can talk, when I say people, I'll say myself, you know me, I'm Mr. Chalk over here. We were all thinking, uh, Tampa Bay goes in there, they get to run it on the Giants. Simple as that. Baker's not going to need to do too much, even though he's playing phenomenal football right now. Um you know, the, the Bucks have actually been running the ball well, too. And that, that's all they needed to do to get it done. So shout out Bucky for taking it to the Giants in jet life. Yeah, Bucky Irving, Oregon alum. And Matt's not here, but I will. He did tell us in the group chat today. I don't know how many drinks in he was when he told us in the group chat. But he did give out Oregon as his national champion. So we'll talk to him about that when we talk about the college football rankings on Thursday. But that's his, that's his team. 
and Jack, we haven't really given out a team, and we'll, we'll have to think of one for Thursday. We haven't given one out. I mean, like, I, I wanted to give out Georgia. I still will. I don't care if they've been losing football games. If they can make the playoff, I still want them. Simple as that. Um, but, I mean, look, Oregon's the 10-0 and or 11-0 and undefeated unanimous number one team. So, you, you can have that, Matt. Yeah, I uh, – my – my BYU Cougars are pretty much done now. Maybe I'll just have to go with Boise State and root for the underdog. But but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. You're already on Boise State. It's simple as that. But also, if we're going to give Matt Oregon, let this be the last time I hear Mr. Chalk and my name used in the same sentence. <laughs> That's fair. I think I think we might have to rebrand it to um, – What's the plural of misters? Like I said, I've been up since four. I can't. I was right going to say, you are right there, buddy. <laughs> is, it, is it misters or two mister? Misters. Misters chalks. Right. Well, misters is if you're talking to like multiple misters. If you're talking about multiple misters. <laughs> See, it's not that easy. Misters. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. <laughs> We'll workshop it and we'll figure it out for Thursday when Matt's on here. But um, dude, we like talking about sports, not grammar. Okay, relax. <laughs> hey, speaking of not chalky, the Titans beat the Texans thirty-two to twenty-seven. Dude, I um, I would just like to say to you and Matt specifically, you two. For giving me all this shit about keeping C.J. Stroud out of my top ten, keeping him below Trevor Lawrence. C.J. Stroud just pulled a Dan Orlovsky. And, yes, I know that he, he was sort of getting sacked as it happened. But, oh, my gosh, he's lucky he was getting sacked as it happened because he would have straight up pulled the Dan Orlovsky, ran out the back of the end zone for a safety to lose his team in the game. It was – look, I, I've said it before. It was also I'll say it again. like fourth and no, 17, no, 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 third no. and 17. Don't care. Don't care. I've said it before. I will say it again. C.J. Stroud is not this generational – Oh my god! Like his his rookie year was very impressive. It was. I was watching it. It was very impressive. He was a rookie. You know, uh, who who was it? Uh, Bryce Young got drafted. The pick before him looked absolutely terrible. That helped CJ Stroud look even better. Um, pretty sure. Yeah, they they did end up winning the division with him by a hair. So look, I, the the hype was warranted. But what did I say in my? Uh, my NFL quarterback uh, preseason rankings. I'm going to need to see it for another year. You don't just have one good year and become a top 10 quarterback. Consistency plays a factor. That has not been the case this year. I'm I'm very happy with Trevor Lawrence right now, not C.J. Stroud. It's crazy to me that you can take C.J. Stroud struggling a little bit and just Put it all the way back around to you're happier with Trevor Lawrence. That when your Jaguars are what two and eight. Yep. Yeah, that's. I mean, I I have to applaud you for just that spin zone because that is um that's something else. I, I think the Texans will still be fine. The Colts lost again today, and we'll get to them later. They'll yeah, be a playoff team. Easily have the the AFC South is easily the worst division in football. I don't like to think it's close. Like there's no like in every division you have some people, some teams at like the bottom of the league, you know, or not every division, but some divisions there's teams at the bottom of the league, and you usually have somebody at the top of your division who's actually legitimate. There's nobody legitimate in our division. Like the Texans, the Colts, the Jags, the Titans, all ass. If you put the entire division together and name them like. I'm not even going to – the Colt – the Colt Zins Jaguars? If you put their whole team together, do they beat the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl? All four of the rosters? Yes. The best players on all four rosters? Yes. I, I don't know. Okay, let's let's think about – you want to do, like, the offense real quick? Like Yeah, you what, you got have, Stroud? I mean, I would have, take Lawrence, but we okay. can do Stroud. Well, well, for the sake of the hypothetical – since I think it'll help my case, we'll get we'll give you Trevor Lawrence. Okay. Well, we'll okay, we'll do Trevor Lawrence. Um, between the five offensive linemen that you're gonna pull from four teams, you think you're that gonna it get would a match up with K- you're gonna get a yeah, it's one. gonna match up with Casey's. You look at tight end. Probably Ingram. 
I think I want Easy. Yeah, and then you got Nico, Tank Dell, and Josh Downs. Brian, Brian Thomas, Josh Downs. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well maybe yeah, it's N- Nico, 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 BTJ with with Josh Downs as the slot guy. Um, and then you got Ingram, and your running back is Jonathan Taylor. Or Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon's been having a hell of a season. Yeah, um, Taylor and Mixon would be a great one. But yes, there. that 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 offense is better. Okay, than maybe, maybe they do beat the Chiefs. Maybe they do beat the Chiefs. You're you're taking four teams and putting them into one. Of course, it's pretty bad. Four teams. But I, I think you could honestly do that with like any two teams and still say that this is going to be better than any one team in the NFL. If you put the Panthers and Giants together, I don't think they beat the Lions. You got me there, Brian. You got me there. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's when, Texans. Oh, wait. Before we move on, Will Levis looked good. Look, he's shown the flashes. It's they're just it's so few and far in between. Like there's he has negative consistency, if that's a thing. Yeah, and we might have to actually throw uh, Nick Westbrook Akinye on that All AFC South team because he's seemingly scoring a touchdown every week now. Dude, I remember picking him up three weeks ago in a, in a deep fantasy league saying, this dude low-key has had a touchdown in four straight weeks. And then what has he done since I picked him up? Touchdown, one game, no touchdown. And then he has like a 98-yard touchdown. And then he has another big game today. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. It's absolutely. Um, it, it, all the touchdowns are long. It's it, they're all long, and it, it, it's the Titans, dude. You don't expect them to do anything. You look at the, you, you don't watch the games. It's the freaking Titans. So you look at the box score at the end of it, and you're like, oh wow, dang, he had a pretty good game. But it's just consistently been happening. Yeah, and I, the one kind of reason I am jazzing up the Titans here, they win their third game of the season, which means. The New York Giants are currently tied with the Jaguars and the Raiders for the number one pick race. And I know the Jaguars aren't drafting a quarterback. I don't know if the Giants will make the right decision at quarterback, but, you know, that's giving me some, giving me some hope here about this football season. Oh, I'm, I'm assuming you still want Sanders? I think I want Cam Ward. Really? Yeah, partly because I did hype him up early in the year and Matt hates him a lot. And I think he'd hate him even more if he was good on the Giants. So you're doing this for personal reasons. Uh, yeah, you know, the Giants are so far away from being good. If I could just have a good quarterback that's flashy, kind of like a Jaden Daniels, it'd, yeah. be, it'd be a lot of fun. I, and I, I guess you don't that. do that. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. As a Forest fan who – survived for a season simply because Gardner Minshew was like just a savant and like a sick dude, the totally chill guy. Um, You know, he's the only thing that got me through that 2019 season. Um, Everything else was just fire burning around me, but I was like sitting there with my little coffee mug saying, ah, we got Gardner Minshew. He's got cool hair. You got your, maybe maybe your, that's all you need as a Giants fan. Uh, just a flashy quarterback that you can, you know, have some fun with. You know, you're not going to win shit, but at least at least you can have some. Fun. I just need a a quarterback that I can look forward to watching after Juan Soto has a home run in the postseason, and I turn on the Giants. I don't want to have to watch Daniel Jones and get sad after I watch the Mets in the postseason. Yeah, that makes sense. I brought up Jaden Daniels. The Cowboys and the Commanders played possibly the drunkest game of football I've ever seen in my life today. It was the first game in the Super Bowl era to have a blocked punt, two kick returns, and two missed PATs. And that all happened in the second half. That is definitely a very, you know, specific stat right there. You know, two missed PATs, two kickoffs returned, a blocked punt. I mean, that's a very specific stat, but... You're right about the fact that it was a drunken game. Um, for I don't remember what the guy's name was, but for was it Dowdle who 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 picked up that? Um, or no, I think it was a DB who picked up that onside kick. I don't. I thought it was um our Auburn guy Noah Igabuwale or whatever, but he's actually on the Commanders now. But he scored against the Giants last year, and he was number thirty. Oh, uh, I believe it was, was number it? thirty. 
how do you pronounce is that Ig Igbahim Igbahimene or something? I think that's closer than what I said. <laughs> but it, it was I think it was number 30 on the Cowboys, but yes, yeah, no reason to crib that. I mean, it is a cool play, but if he just goes down, they win the game. And yeah. especially after you give up an 85 yard touchdown drive before. Yeah, but if you're a special teams guy, you're not you're not gonna yeah. give up the opportunity to score the only touchdown you probably will ever have in your career. Yeah, and you can kind of see McCarthy and the special teams coach talking on the sideline. McCarthy looked mad, and the special teams coach was trying to calm him down. That's probably exactly what they were talking about. Yeah, exactly. Like this is the only time he's ever going to be able to do this in his career. So let him have it. Yeah, it, I mean, it was that pretty much sums up the game. Then we had the the Turpin drops it. Kind of looks like the miracle of the Meadowlands, and then disgusting. Just hit B on the and then move the joystick around and made five people miss. That was, it was that was the sickest move I've seen this season. And I know like the Saquon Barkley jumping backwards was cool, but that wasn't nearly as cool as that fucking spin move. He put the entire field in the dishwasher. It was this like the same thing we saw with the and I hate talk talking about Alabama football, but with the Ryan Williams long touchdown. It's like the second six spin move we've seen this year in football. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I'm still I'm not gonna give Ryan Williams that kind of credit. I mean, he it was a it was a great catch, great moves to get upfield and score that touchdown. Uh, but dude, that turpin sticking that foot on the ground and then just completely switching to the other side on your own like five yard line, nonetheless, too, like dangerous play. It, it looked like sick. something straight out of sick. Madden. It, it was straight no, out of Madden. straight out of Madden. Like the entire field's going this way because it's a computer generated thing, and you know it follows an algorithm. And they're all coming this yep. way, and then you just hit B real quick, and you just flip them all out. I mean, it was it was incredible. It really was incredible. Yeah, and I enjoyed that play a little extra. And I won't go too deep into the rabbit hole here, but a couple of our Auburn buddies and I have that Hunter Fantasy Football League where we also get points for kickoff return yards. So I picked up Turpin as my wide receiver, too, this week, thinking the commanders would just blow him out and be kicking off a lot so he'd get those kick return yards. That didn't really happen, but he did crib that, so that gave me a nice little boost there. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, but, yeah, last thing here, Jaden Daniels was kind of falling off, and we'll talk about Bo Nix, who played Gardner Minshew, who we already talked about today. But they're kind of the two in the rookie of the year race. I think Jaden took, took back the lead after this game, even though they lost. But it's getting pretty close here. Yeah, I, I can't believe Bo Nix is in this conversation. I really – that's that's all I have for you. I cannot believe that Bo Nix is in the Rookie of the Year conversation in the NFL. That's yeah, and crazy to me. A lot of the clips that we post on our social medias are obviously very timely, so they only have a certain amount of news cycle. We mm -hmm. posted something about the Bo Nix pick after the draft, and we've been getting comments – like trickling down every week of the football season. Like, how does the pick sound now? How does the pick sound now? So that is not aging well at all. I mean, look, at the end of the day, like, like the, it, it has it not aged well? Look, I know Bo Nix has been playing some good football. I know the Broncos have been playing some good football. But, guys, let's be real here. What is the ceiling of this team? A first-round exit in the playoffs? Maybe the round have some – Tim Tebow magic in the uh, in in overtime in round one of a playoff game and somehow make it to round two only to get smacked out of the of the race. I mean, guys, look, they, maybe they're not the four win team that we expected. That, but that's not, the whole thing. They're, anything, they're, they're over under with seven four and a half wins. So like, you got to let them enjoy it. I'm going to say the same thing I said about the Grimace Mets this year. Like, nothing was expected. So enjoy the ride. You're not going to win at all, but enjoy the ride. Exactly. Exactly. Like, you know, cool. Have fun. You, you, you're doing better than expected. At the end of the day, I'm not going to say I was wrong. Bo Nix is not going to be anything worthwhile in the NFL. Yeah, a team with a rookie quarterback that is doing worse than expected. The Chicago Bears lost again at home, 30-27. to 27. You know, it's very tough to hold Justin Jefferson to two catches in a game. It's even tougher to hold Justin Jefferson to two catches in a game and lose that game. And that's exactly what the Bears did. Yeah. I mean, look, I know Aston had his day. Um, but I mean, like, look, if, if you're the Bears, like you're 
if you're playing the Vikings, not if you're, not even if you're the Bears, you're playing the Vikings, you know Justin Jefferson, 18. He's got, you know, everything is circled around him. You're, you're putting up the little stickers with the stars on them. You're putting glitter around his name. Like, you got to make sure people know that this dude's here. We all know it. So, yeah, you can do your best to shut him down, hold him to two catches. There's still 10 other players on the offense you got to worry about. Yeah, and it's just the Bears – I don't know. The offense looked better. DJ Moore had a good game. Caleb Keenan Allen had like 15 targets and I was gonna say catch. had one of his best games of the season, I think, like statistics wise. I mean, had three hundred something yards and two touchdowns, no turnovers, and he had a pretty good game by all accounts. Yeah, it's just they can't put a full game of football together. And I don't think they're gonna be able to do that on a short week against the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving. And that would be their seventh loss. So is it time to call the Chicago Bears dead? Yes. As far as this season goes, I, I thought mm-hmm. we were already there, personally. I think I think we well, – I, I mean, they beat my Jags um, in London. And then I think the game after that, I can't remember who they played or what it looked like. But I want to say, like, that was the game where I was like, dude, like, they're, they're, they're not good enough. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I guess it's the optimist in me hoping they can make a run here just to make some chaos in the NFL. But unless they could somehow beat the Lions on Thanksgiving, it's, uh, it's a wrap for the 2024 Chicago Bears. Oh, now I'm remembering. It was when Tyreek Stevenson was mouthing off to fans, mm-hmm. and then they, who, whoever they played completed that Hail Mary to win the Jayden game. Jaden Daniels. Yeah, yeah, the Commanders and Dan- Daniels completed that Hail Mary to win the game. And then the next week, you see DJ Moore, like, walk over to the bench in the middle of play. Um, yeah, that was crazy. Caleb Williams' yeah. scramble. That was also crazy. Um, but, yeah, I think after those two instances, you were like, yeah, no, this is – like, the week after the Tyreek Stevenson-, Stevenson thing happened, like, you expect this team to come lock the fuck in so nothing like this happens again. That didn't happen, and that's when you knew this is not happening this year. Not with this coaching staff. Yeah, it's uh, they're going to need a full reset. Well, not a full reset because you can't get a new quarterback here. But in terms of the coaching staff, full reset yeah. next year. Yeah, and look, it's it sucks. Like like they're they're in the same they're going to be in the same position as the Jaguars were with Trevor Lawrence after his rookie year. Um, and I will say, Matt Eber. Eberflus is not as bad as Urban Meyer for the simple reason of he's not making the season about him. I mean, it's still about Caleb. It's still about the Bears team. The whole first season with Trevor and whatever, that was all about Urban. It was fucking terrible. But the one thing I will say is it's not easy for a young quarterback to keep on switching up coordinators and coaches and all this and that. And Trevor's about to go through it again. I just feel for Caleb. I'm not going to sit here and say, like, Eber Blues has to be fired, but he should be. But whoever you bring in next, it, it, I just – I hope for the Bears' sake it's not a, a Doug Peterson who you fire after two years and you're back to square one again with Caleb. And he's going on to his third system within his first five years of your team because that's yeah. what we got going. And hey, maybe they get a Deion Sanders, and I don't know if that's a – Another Urban Meyer disaster waiting to happen, but who knows? Maybe maybe the Bears figure it out here and hire someone big. It could be Dion. Oh, that's wild, dude. Do you really think Dion is going to coach Shadur in like the NFL? I don't think he wants to coach his son, but who knows? I mean, if the Giants. Oh no! Now I'm going through disaster scenarios in my head where the Giants draft Shadur and then fire Dable. Fire Dable. And then bring in Dion. And that would that's... be a fair situation. But also, if we're being honest, Brian, something tells me as soon as we start talking about this just five seconds ago, something's telling me Shadur and Dable doesn't work. I don't think it works at all. Well, so this may not sound great for future prospects here, but I, Shador reminds me a lot – of Daniel Jones when Daniel Jones showed signs of being good where like in that Dable offense where it's get ball, throw ball and just what you see quick slants, just 
get the ball and get it out of your hand quick. And that's what that's what Shador does a lot of at Colorado. And that's what Daniel Jones did a lot of when they made the playoffs, and he looked like a good quarterback. So maybe he could just be a better version of what Daniel Jones was that year in Dable's offense. Maybe. So you're comparing your future franchise quarterback to your franchise quarterback that you just – I'm, I'm comparing the future franchise quarterback to the franchise quarterback we just cut, but looked competent and above average competent for a six game stretch. And I think Shador could be better than what he looked when he looked competent for that six game stretch in the Dable offense. Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Okay, well, that's enough Bears and Deion Sanders. We'll, we'll go down to – not the Pacific Northwest. We'll go down to the Southeast, to Miami, where Ron DeSantis has seemingly let everybody into the state since the early 2020s besides the New England Patriots. The Patriots have not won there since 2019. They still have not won there. 34-15, to 15, Dolphins win. Uh, Tua looked good. Devon Achan looked good. Skylar Thompson came in the game, and the offense immediately fumbled. But they still won. Yeah, I was just having a conversation. Uh, what, what, what was it about? Oh, it was after watching the uh, the 49ers get their shit kicked in today uh, by the Green Bay Packers. You don't have they didn't have Brock Purdy. I know, I know, we're getting off topic from the game here, but they didn't have Brock Purdy, and they just looked like they weren't a competent NFL offense. Like simple as that. You lose your starting quarterback. Doesn't matter who you are, for the most part. I mean, there's there are Joe Flacco's out there as backups. There are James Winston's out there as backups who are decent enough. But the Jaguars with Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones, the, the Dolphins with Tua and Skylar Thompson, the 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 49ers with Brock Purdy and Brandon Allen. Was that his name? Yep. <laughs> Brandon <laughs> Allen. Um and I know there's got to be a couple more that I'm thinking that have happened this season that I'm forgetting at this yeah. moment. But when you don't have your starting quarterback, as the Dolphins didn't have Tua for so long, they were just not an NFL team. Simple as that. They, they were tough to watch. They couldn't move the ball. They couldn't sustain drives. It was just terrible. Now they have Tua back. Now they're starting to cook. And I know it was against the Patriots, who really anybody can cook on them. But I'm just – I'm happy for Dolphins fans to get your quarterback back to start looking like a real team again, you know, just like winning games or not, just to look like a real team, that's awesome for them. Yeah, and listen, they have a tough draw with the Packers and Lambeau Field, and we know how Tua plays when the temperature gets cold. But if they can win that game, they get the Jets and then the Patriots again. They could be 7-5 and five by the time we hit mid-December, and we're talking about the Dolphins as a sleeper Super Bowl team here. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I was about to say, like, yo, Super Bowl, like, relax on that. But, I mean, if they have the personnel to do it. Yeah, and I'll they do. That. And if they, they can they get in the, the dance, they have a chance, especially with the Chiefs not looking amazing. And I, I guess the Bills, who it's easy to forget because we had so many teams on by and they didn't play this week, but they've looked elite. But, yeah, yeah. speaking of the Chiefs, 30 to 27 over the Panthers. Yeah, I thought. Brian. I was going to say, before you get in, I didn't get to watch this game. How on earth did the Chiefs give up 27 points to the Carolina Panthers? Bryce Young looked competent. And some might say he looked good. No way. Bryce Young looked good? Good, 263 yards. Like, good good like a slice of pizza or good like I'll take you out on a date? Good like a... A warm slice of pizza. Okay. It, he looked, I mean, he hit Adam Thielen on some nice D patterns. He c- converted on some fourth and shorts where they needed him to convert and he moved the chains. He, he was he was solid today. And Adam Thielen came back, played very well. Jatavion Sanders, who I don't know how he dropped. I think he was a third round pick for them. But he's kind of broken out here. He got hurt in this yeah. game, unfortunately. But yeah, I. I was coming into this week saying the Panthers were kind of sneaky, and I didn't know why. I think the TikTok edits convinced me, but they turned out being pretty sneaky. That's wild. Yeah, I, I don't understand. Like, this finished as a 30-27 to 27 game, three-point game 
for the best team in the AFC versus like the worst team in the NFC. Just very surprising how it was even that close. But look, Bryce Young plays well. Look what can happen. Yeah, and I didn't even tell you the craziest part. They were down 27 to 19 with like three minutes left. And Bryce Young went down the field and they scored on a one-yard touchdown run. And then Bryce Young converted the two-point conversion. And then Mahomes got the ball back and then they won on the field. But Bryce Young down eight points, led his team back. Unfortunately, I was really hoping we'd get the Panthers win because they've never won on NFL Red Zone. Red Zone premiered in 2009. The last time the Panthers beat the Chiefs was 2008. Oh, oh, you're talking about the Chiefs specifically. Yeah, no, I, I realize I, I misspoke there. They have one yeah. on NFL Red Zone. Yeah, no, I was I was sitting there dumbfounded. Like, you're telling – I mean, the Panthers have been that bad where I could believe that. But you want to know what I'm just remembering right now? Well, early on in this Rams-Eagles game, Kyron fumbled that football, yep. and then the Rams ran their entire next play, and then they went back and Siri and because Sirianni bitched enough, they were like, "Oh, okay, we'll honor your challenge." Yep, Fuck and that. they, uh, I was listening to it on the radio, but they said they called forward progress too, and you're not supposed to be able to review that. I don't know if they called forward progress or not. I was watching live. I don't know if they called. I didn't hear whistles to say that they call for progress or anything. Um, it was very clearly a fumble. I'm not going to argue that. Uh, obviously, if there was for progress first, it doesn't matter. Um, but it was a fumble it, like you normally do on, you know, curious plays like that. You run up to the line, you call hike, you move on. You know, you mm-hmm. don't give the team a, or anybody a chance to review it and challenge it. That's what the Rams did. Uh, and they, and just, like, they just let they let them get the flag off. I mean, simple as that. Like it, it was, they, they ran the whole play. Dude was tackled, and they were like, "We're gonna go back and review that play." Like, when have you ever seen that? Yeah, like, that's, that's terrible. That is that what? And they showed they showed the replay. Siri, Siriani throws the challenge flag, um, but the ref is already. Like, the, the, like, you know how normally you have, like, the ref, like, there when you're about to make some timeout or challenge or something like that? You always have a ref, like, literally standing right next to you before you do yeah. that. The ref was there. Sirianni had the challenge flag in his fucking hand. And then the Rams called hike, started running the play, and you see and the ref. The flag? Like, no, you see the ref, like, turn his back to Sirianni and start sprinting. Like with the play that's happening after the fumble yeah. play, um, and then Sirianni throws the flag as the as like he, the, by the time Sirianni lets go of the flag and it's like in the air, you see the ref's back like ninety degrees or just one hundred eighty, whatever, just his back like to Sirianni to everything that he's doing, throwing the flag or whatever, and they still gave it to him. Like that's terrible. Yeah. I mean, I, and obviously, obviously, I'm sitting here as the Kyron Williams fantasy manager saying I don't want that fumble on my conscience and on my scoreboard. But no, that's it, that's terrible. I mean, it, it, was, it was pretty pretty questionable. It was it was it was late enough to where you go, okay, they had way more, way more than enough time to get the call in from New York to tell them what to do. Yeah. So I think they wanted the Eagles to have the ball there. NFL rigged. And Matt loves talking about NFL rigged. Maybe maybe we won't let him talk about it anymore because uh, it helped out his Eagles a little bit. I think they did. did the Eagles just throw a pick? That doesn't matter. Stafford got sacked halftime. Um, but, yeah, we were on the Chiefs and Panthers. We were on the Chiefs and Panthers. I mean, who cares? Yeah, David Moore at 80 yards. Who cares? Who? David Moore's family. I, I I apologize, Mrs. Moore. Hopefully you're still with us. <laughs> let's let's just assume she is, Fry. Come on. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't need to throw David that out. Moore? Who knows about David Moore? Especially his personal life and his mother. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm she's a phenomenal g- lady. David Moore mom. 
Um, okay, it doesn't even have a real Wikipedia page. Um, exactly. Okay. Well, Wait, he Kevin has Martin. to have a Wikipedia. Bro, my, my buddy who plays basketball in Taiwan has a Wikipedia page. You're telling me David Moore doesn't? Okay. He does. It comes up as David Moore, parentheses, wide receiver. Is there – well, yeah, I was going to say David Moore is probably a common name. Yeah. No, when I originally Googled it, it took me to, like, a politics tab, like officer tab. <laughs> um, but, yeah, 29 years old. He's from uh, Oklahoma. David Moore. Okay. But um, the Lions beat the Colts. 24 to 6. As, ex- as expected. I mean, we – Maybe could have seen a little bit more out of AR in the Colts offense. Steichen is probably – I don't think he's on the hot seat per se, but things are not working out for the Colts the way they should be. No. Um, they would not have many members on the all-AFC team, all-AFC South team. They're, uh, they're a struggling organization right now. Don't really know what else to say there. No, yeah, Colts are struggling. I mean, the entirety of the AFC South is struggling. It's it's pretty embarrassing that none of these four teams can just step up and be like, "Look, we'll be good. Like, we'll we'll volunteer and be the good team out of the division." Everybody just wants to suck. Yeah, and, and the, the Lions side, are. I was just say on the flip side. On the flip side, it's the Lions, bro. They're they're sick. Yeah, they didn't get the fifty burger against the AFC South team, but they did get twenty. And David Montgomery got hurt, I think, but. Dable or not Dable, jeez. Giants on my mind too much here. Um, Campbell, much better coach, said that he they took him out for precautionary reasons because of the short week. So he should be good to go for things. Smart, smart coach. And we have um, I believe it's Shabuzi. I think that's his name, doing the halftime show in Detroit. On that is that is a musical artist. I didn't know that he was doing the halftime show, but good for you. Yeah, he's the uh He's the um the tipsy guy, right? Yeah. Okay. Which well, is a phenomenal song. Yeah, I know. Uh, it was on my mind because we got the memory of me guessing Jack Harlow's first song for last year's Thanksgiving, and I believe I guessed first class and I got it wrong. But oh. I don't. I don't think there's any chance he doesn't come out to that tipsy song for his first. Unless he closes with it. Yeah, but you got to grab the people's attention. I don't know if he has another song that'll grab the people's attention. So you lock it in right now for a song, Tipsy? I don't even I know. It's, it's got to be called Tipsy, right? It's got to be. Shabuzi. Shabuzi. A bar song, parentheses, Tipsy. Yeah, there you go. I didn't think it was called Tipsy. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, I'll lock it in. A bar song, first song. There you go. But, yeah, that is the Lions game. Um, might as well talk about Bo Nix and his Broncos beating Gardner Minshew. May his collarbone rest in peace. 29-19. to 19. What is there to talk about here? Well, I was really hoping to see AOC come back, but I forgot he was hurt, so we saw Desmond Ritter. Uh, success in Nevada still eludes AOC. And apparently Desmond Ritter, because he fumbled, and not that he was going to lead the Raiders back, but he didn't do a good job at helping them win the game. Desmond Ritter is now the third-string quarterback on the Raiders? Apparently so. I definitely missed that news. Um, so did I. <laughs> I'm sorry, who's backing up Derek Carr? Derek oh, Carr Spencer is on... Rattler. Spencer yeah, Rattler. Spencer Rattler. And then they got Taysom Hill as the uh, – the emergency guy. Wait, I'm sorry. So Rit- now I was I was getting a uh, NFC South teams mixed up. So Ritter was on the Falcons last year. Who's Kirk's backup? Oh, Michael Penix. Yeah. Did Ritter stop with the Saints? He might have stopped with this, or maybe it was just Falcons. No, I think it was just the Falcons. Now Des- Desmond Ritter and Spencer Rattler kind of do sound a little it's, alike. They they kind I don't want to say they look alike because they really don't. But, they're the same type of quarterback. Yeah, they're the same type of quarterback. They got they got the same vibe. Let me put it that way. Yeah, they got the same. They vibe. do. Um, good, but you know, yeah. Way. So, I mean, that's that's a that's interesting to think about. Yeah, Atlanta completely, you know, said 
get out of here to their quarterback room. Yeah. And I'm going to have to make a section 400 bingo card for 2025 because I hate when people use that wasn't on my bingo card as a hypothetical when they definitely don't have a bingo card for the year. But if we had a 2024 bingo card, Desmond Ritter and Amir Abdullah in an NFL backfield in the year 2024 would not have been on our bingo card. Dude, Amir Abdullah had a hell of a game today. He got a touchdown. He had like four. Like I was um in one of my fantasy football leagues. I was looking around and you know buy him again in week as you were saying. Bills on a buy, Jags on a buy, Falcons on a buy. There's a lot of teams on a buy this week. I saw my buddy pick up Amir Abdullah. What? You're, you're going to put the Jags in there like they have much fantasy relevance? Brian, let me have my moment. <laughs> but I, I saw. Like, you tried to sneak him in there too. Like you threw him in between the Falcons and the Bills. <laughs> Some primo teams right there. <laughs> yeah, but no, I. Uh, I saw a buddy pick up Amir Abdullah today and put him in the flex. And, I mean, look, I know ball. I gagged when I saw that. I, I absolutely was like, yeah, well, what are we doing picking up Amir Abdullah right now? There's just – like, let's just dream Taysom Hill in the flex instead, you know, kind of thing. But shout out. I mean, when I checked it, four catches, 50 yards, a touchdown, I was like, what? Why? How? I mean, 15 PPR points is – you can't complain about that from anybody. Yeah, it's very much shades of like a Jarek McKinnon two years ago at the end of the year when he just had those crazy fantasy performances. But I saw a lot of Amir Abdullah because I played Matt in our high school league this week, and he started Amir Abdullah because he was on Pimageddon. And then I started Amir Abdullah in our Auburn league because I was like, I'm going to hedge my happiness here. Either Matt – he does horrible for Matt or he does well for Matt and well for me. Uh, and it turned out he did okay. So shout out to everyone that started Amir Abdullah in fantasy, I guess. Yeah, you guys have balls of steel, and it ended up working out for you. Yeah, we got two games left here. You mentioned the Packers beating up on the 49ers. 38-10, to 10, Jordan Love in his career po- post-Toyotathon is now 9-2 and two with 23 touchdowns and two interceptions. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this to one person and one person only. Carter, I apologize. I didn't realize that your Green Bay Packers and, and Jordan Love balled on Toyota Thon like that. I mean, Brian pulls up these stats. I hear them. Most of them are BS. I mean, they're they're, they're stats. They're they're, they're factual, uh, objectively speaking. But like we're we're talking about Kyler Murray's Call of Duty runs. We're talking about Jordan Love's Toyota Thon. Uh, you know, there, oh, there, there's other kind of showed up this week, and we'll get to the Cardinals next. But um, the the Call of Duty kind of showed itself. But anyway, there's always this stat in the third that Brian wants to put on us, and I'm just saying no. That 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 doesn't have any actual relevance to what's going on in real world. Dude, Toyota thought might be the real deal. I, I really think it is. And the Packers are all of a sudden alive for the one seed. And if they can beat the Lions, they got one more head-to-head, they might win that division. And it's going to no. be tough. But no, no. Josh Jacobs had three touchdowns today. He ran all over. The 49ers offense is hurt. The 49ers defense is still missing Dre Greenlaw. But they're, I guess, Nick Bosa. They been, too, they, but. Their defense hasn't been a good unit all year, though. It's still, a, I would call him above average, and Packers above average, 38 yeah. points. I don't know. I, I really like the Packers. And the Niners, like Christian McCaffrey, um, I think it's clear his Achilles are not right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think this said a lot more about the Niners than it did the Packers. I'm Personally, I'm still not bought into the Packers. They're, they're a good team. I won't take that away from them. I think Jordan Love is a good quarterback. I think Matt LaFleur is a good coach. Josh Jacobs very clearly has some gas left in the tank. They're a good team. Their their defense gets more turnovers than I think any other team in the league. I might be wrong about that, but they're up there. I'm not in on the Packers. I'm still not in on them. I they're, they're, They just play a style of football that I don't trust. It's very gimmicky. You know, you want to give uh, Mike McDaniels all his flack down in Miami. 
I'm, I give Matt LaFleur flack. I mean, honestly, the, the, the best times I've seen him coach is when Malik Willis is in um, and he's running the football. So, no, I, I'm not in on the Packers. You can be in on the Packers. You think you can think that they can win the, divert, the, the, the division. There's no shot that they take that from the Lions. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe that was a little bit of the, again, optimist in me that wants to see chaos. But I, I do think the Packers have a real shot here. And when we brought uh, Andrew Banstra on to do the NFC North preview before the season started, he was talking about how the Packers could be a sneaky Super Bowl team, but he didn't really see it yet. I think we're starting to see their ceiling, and that ceiling could be very high. Yeah. Yeah, I think I could be wrong about this, but I think when I did my quarterback rankings, I put Jordan Love one spot behind Stroud. I think it went Lawrence 10, Stroud 11, Love 12. Again, the same. I gave him the same reasoning I gave Stroud. I need to see it for more than just one year. I need to see the consistency. Um, and I'm not sitting here saying Trevor Lawrence has been consistent. I'm not. So let's, let's not hop on me for that. That's besides the point. Jordan Love has shown the flashes. Same as CJ. I'm not in on him yet. I'm still not in on Jordan Love. He's not an elite quarterback yet. I don't want to say what you want. Show me whatever clips you want to show me, whatever games you want to show me. He's not elite yet. Elite quarterbacks do it consistently over seasons, plural. You know, I'm not going to kill you for that take. I, I, I wouldn't know. I don't know if I'd call him elite either. I do think he's very good. And if he can make it to an NFC championship game this year, I think he enters that elite conversation. If you can impress in an NFC championship game this year, he can enter the elite conversation. Okay. Yeah, that, that's fair to say. Um, but, yeah, I'm sure Carter and maybe our guy Mark, big Packers fans, Mark. are listening to this. So let, let us know what where you rank Jordan Love in your in your top ten. Because I know he'll be in the top ten. Yeah. So, so let me know where he is in the top ten. Uh, but last game we have to talk about here. Seattle Seahawks, who I wish Matt was on the podcast tonight so I can make fun of them because they completely kicked – they boat, uh, boat race might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but it was never close. They beat the Cardinals 16-6. to Call of Duty came out. Kyler Murray said the job's finished. Kobe Bryant, Seahawks defensive back, said the job's not finished. Pick six. The Seahawks looked like the better team, and they are leading the NFC West right now. I I think it's crazy that I, – I shouldn't say it's crazy. Yeah, it, look, the, the part about the, this is crazy is these four teams, um, you know, the, the, in, the, in, the, in the NFC West, the Niners, ever since they got Purdy, um, the – the Seahawks with Geno and with Russ, um, the Cardinals ever since they got Kyler, and then uh, the Rams ever since they got Stafford. All four of those teams have been really good teams on paper. Yeah. And it's not until this year that it actually seems like it, right? <laughs> all four teams are playing pretty well. All four are competitive. And I thought that this was going to be the way – Five years ago, since Kyler was drafted, since uh, – I mean, even before the Niners got Brock Purdy, they were still, like, a good team. Like, they yeah. were trying to figure out with, like, Trey, Trey Lance and shit, but they were still a really good team. Trey Lance was winning um, games. He just was hurt yeah. all the time. Yeah. The, I mean, that they had – that was their situation. The the, Seah the Seahawks five years ago had Russell Wilson, you know, a Super Bowl winner – uh, the, the reason Cardinals the had just got West will never win another championship. Russell Wilson, shout out Russ. Yeah. So long story short, all four of these teams are good football teams. They're playing good football in a competitive division somehow, some way. I will go as far to say as the 49ers look the worst right now. I mean, to be fair, they're one without their starting quarterback, but. It, it, for a team that I expected to go back and win the division and, and be in the NFC championship, you know, race pretty easily. It's looking like a much longer of a shot now. I am absolutely terrified. The 49ers signed Daniel Jones and Kyle Shanahan turns them into a decent quarterback and they go on a run and make the playoffs. 
Well, that's been the 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 litmus test, right? It's can we take this quarterback, put him on the 49ers and be good? And like honestly, Daniel Jones, yes, you probably could do that. Yeah, and that might very well happen or he'll sign with the Cowboys and beat the Giants on Thanksgiving. That's not happening. Oh. Yeah. I guess with I guess with Dak hurt for the year, it's not <laughs> Yeah. Totally and then he could be the backup the when Dak's back. Yeah, but look, this is this is <laughs> Daniel Jones. Like Cowboys fans have done nothing but make fun of him for the past five years. Yeah. But it, it would be pretty funny of Jerry Jones to do that to the Giants. Jones and Jones, baby. There you go. Jones and for some Jones. Um I think that's a good place to end it. I think we just had Saquon Barkley run for a 70-yard touchdown. So, Matt – Are we probably... back from half? Yeah, yeah. Saquon opened it with a long touchdown run. So, Matt's probably somewhere going crazy, along with uh, Zach Myers and Will and Austin. We're very outnumbered here in terms of fans. Yeah, there's a lot of Philly folk. A lot of <laughs> Philly folk. There really are. But Matt will be back on the show on Thursday – a packed Thursday show where hopefully we're recapping the Auburn Tigers winning the Maui Invitational. And we got college football talk and some Thanksgiving games to go over and our NFL confidence picks. And I think I'm in the lead right now for this week, at least. So I might be making up some points. Uh, but yeah, until then, definitely, definitely a poor showing for me right now. It's been a lot of traveling. I haven't been in the lab watching as much football highlights as I usually like to, but we'll be back at it soon enough. Yeah, the holidays are always tough. And, hey, we got Bowmas coming up, so you're going to have to lock in on some football for Bowmas. No doubt about it. Uh, but until then, um, I hate doing these outros. This is normally Matt's, <laughs> Matt's bread and butter here, but it was fun. War Eagle, big football win. War Eagle. Got a big Maui Invitational win. I wish Jerry Slayton would have caught a pass, and I wish the New York Giants were better. Makes sense. I'm glad the Jags were on a bye week this week. It it really, it was really nice to have the Jags on a bye when Auburn wins a big game like this. So I can just be happy, you know, all week. I don't have to be happy just Saturday and then Sunday comes around and the Jags get their asses kicked and I get I get sad again. I'm gonna I'm gonna ride this Auburn win up until when you guys are listening to this tonight when Auburn plays Iowa state uh in basketball we win that i'm gonna stay happy we will we lose that going right back down the hill yeah well you'll have to tune in on thursday to see to see jack's mood but um that's that's all for me i'm tired i want to go to bed see you guys thursday see you guys after we beat uconn war eagle oh damn